So Elizabeth, uh, you've made your uh, writing and directing debut with the film, What They Had, uh, which is a story about one family's struggle with their matriarch's battle with Alzheimer's. Um, take us back to the beginning and where the idea for this movie came from. And as I understand, it was, it was rather personal for you. Yes. Yes, it was a personal, um, it was a personal story that I felt compelled to write after witnessing the things that happened in my family around my grandmother's Alzheimer's disease, that like the 17 year journey we went on with her, that she battled the disease. Um, and it really was a, come, came from a place of grief and not wanting to let go of things that I, and people and places that I wasn't ready to let go of. Um, and uh, to sort of make some sense out of some order out of something that felt really chaotic and unfair, make something beautiful out of it, if I could. Well, uh, tell us a little bit about the development of the story. Uh, I don't know how much of your own self you put into it, uh, but talk a bit, if you could, about uh, how you shaped this into a, a story. Well, I wrote the first draft really quickly, um, like a three-day crazy writing binge, and it was terrible. But it, it had a lot of the structural elements and the some of the scenes, you know, that were there, and the spirit was just starting to take shape. But it was definitely a very conflict-centered, you know, broad strokes version of what ultimately became many, many, many drafts later, the, 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 film, the film. And there was a lot of personal details that I included and wanted to include as this kind of love poem to my family and to my hometown, Chicago. Um, and as the, the rewrites, you know, I, I did like 40 rewrites after that draft and over the, the course of those many, many rewrites, started to mine stuff in my own personality, in my own life, and, you know, work through this, all these things that I was kind of reckoning with and still am and probably will always be reckoning with. So, um, you know, it's definitely a piece of my heart, really. And I, I wrote it with a lot of love and, and, I, and um, to them, and then a lot of sort of uh, trying to reckon with my own stuff. <laughs> Was it difficult for you to uh, work on something that was uh, so personal to you? I mean, how did you, um, you know, because in a sense, I mean, you at, at a certain point, you know, you're you're making a movie and you have to think about it in terms of a three act structure and all this other stuff. Was it difficult to, in a sense, uh, detach yourself in a way to to look at the script objectively and see? what it needed uh, to make it, you know, dramatically yeah. you know, feasible? Yes. Yeah, it was challenging. Um, it was challenging in many, many regards. You know, I, I wanted my, I, I really wanted to honor my family in the way that I could live with, right? Um, and also make something really good because I think, or as good as I could, because I think that also I needed to live with and, you know, and, Someone told me once, like one of the many, many wonderful pieces of feedback that I got from the many, many wonderful people who are willing to read it and tell me what was wrong with it, was um, was that you know when you write something personal, which was hard for me. Yes, it was hard to like mine my family for dramatic material, and that was hard, especially something that I would end up sharing. Right, the, original, the first draft was never really intended to be shared with anyone but my my mom and and her brothers, and you know between our family, but. Someone said that, you know, when you when you're writing something personal, the best favor you can do to them is make it good. Mm -hmm. you know, whatever that means, um, you're much better off doing that than keeping it true to the story. Um, they'll be much more grateful if you make something good. So I tried to keep that in mind and 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 you know and and make it as dramatically compelling. Think about the spirit of the story rather than the the plot points of the story that as they actually happened. Um, but it, it was, it was very challenging in a number of different ways throughout the writing process and the directing process and, and the editing process and this process now in release, it's like, it's, yeah, it's, it's, it's hard to put something so vulnerable out into the world. 
Talk a little bit about the family dynamic uh, in the movie. I mean, you have um, these, uh, you know, these two characters who are siblings, played by uh, Michael Shannon and uh, Hilary Swank. Uh, one of them is very much wanting to uh, deal with the problem of their mother's Alzheimer's head on. Uh, the other one is a little more hesitant to insert herself in there. Then you have the father, who is uh, played by Robert Forster and dead set against sending his wife to a home, who's played by Blythe Danner. Talk a bit about crafting the family dynamic and about creating these characters who are who are so much based on your real life family. I should also mention Tessie Formiga as Hilary Swank's daughter. She's she's also in there as well. Thank you. Um. Well, I think I really started with Bert and Ruth. Those were the, the people that were most based on my real grandparents that I was really inspired to write the story around from a personal place of not wanting to accept their my loss of them and our family's loss of them sooner than we wanted, sooner than we were ready for, sooner than what felt fair. So they, I would say, are as close you know, to a portrait um, and certainly wanted to capture my grandmother, the woman that she was, always was, you know, the disease was just, her diagnosis was just one of many, many, many infinite things that shaped the, the woman that she was at that time. And I wanted to really try to capture those as, as, as truthfully and authentically as I could. Um, and then the other characters kind of unfolded from there. I, I really wanted, um, you know, the, I, I really wanted um, to explore these like generational wounds, you know, that we kind of give each other these traumas that we that we kind of slam down our kids' throats without with with the best of intentions, um, and you know, explore how trauma is passed down from one generation to the next, and that the, the mistakes that we make in, in parenting are the things we swore we never make, and we just can't see it, um, and you know, the the kind of like coming to terms with your parent and and accepting on both parties that you, you might not be the kind of person that you would have dreamed up, right? Your, your parent is not that person and you're not the person your parent would have dreamed up and, and trying to come to terms with that. It was definitely inspired by that moment of having to parent your parents, those that weird power shift that happens and will happen to all of us. Um, that we're never prepared for and we don't really talk about. So it was it was inspired by all of those things and and the and the love story. Like I still feel that it's this generational love story. A family love story, you know, a, a love story between a mother and a daughter and you know um to me that's what I tried to capture was like authentic love, you know. So um yeah, Hil Hillary's characters some one that I really resonate with personally, just given, you know, the struggle that she has to feel like she deserves to be heard and deserves to be seen. And, you know, she shouldn't always just be the good girl. Coming from my own childhood as a Catholic and trying to be a good girl, and if you don't, if you can't say anything nice, don't say anything at all, and walking down the street and having a stranger tell me to smile, you know, just trying to be happy. And then Michael became this character that's the other voice in my head that's like, cares like stop being such a coward stop being you know stop worrying what people think you're just making life hard like be brave and bold and 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 um and in a way he's this kind of guy i aspire to be <laughs> so talk a little bit about uh the cast uh, i mentioned uh, uh hillary swank michael shannon robert forster blythe danner tassia famiga uh a lot of generations worth of great actors in there so um, can you talk a bit about uh, assembling the five of them to play this family? What made them right for the roles? Well, I, I really wanted to capture it authentically. Um, family, I wanted them to really feel like family, and I wanted it to really feel like a Chicago family. I thought that was imperative to get the tone right, you know, to make us really engage with them and care about this very, with this story about real people coping with something real that we all cope with, you know, and um, I didn't dream really that this, that I would have actors of this caliber, but I, I knew that I, we had to get the best actors we could get our hands on, given that it's a, such a contained dialogue heavy, relationship heavy piece. 
Hillary came, Hillary read the script after um, her agent, after it had circulated her agency, she read the script and, you know, was willing to come and meet with me. And when I met her, it was like, oh my gosh, this woman that I've been trying to conjure is like here in the flesh. We just had a really wonderful connection and, and, and kind of a mutual experience in a lot of ways. And that was all stuff that we wanted to mine. And then, you know, the rest of the cast just kind of came everybody wants to work with Hillary. She's like one of the greatest of our generation. So I think it inspired everyone to, to take a leap of faith on, on a script that they, you know, that they connected with. I feel that they're all perfect. Perfect. I, I couldn't have asked for a more perfect group of folks to, to come and help me tell the story. I, they're perfect for the roles and perfect for as a family. And, um, I got very lucky. <laughs> um, you are you an actor yourself. yourself. So, uh, talk a bit about how you work with actors. What's your approach to uh, getting the performances out of them? Well, I, I I was really careful in writing the script to make it feel to write to try to capture real voices as, as much as I could, but in a way, it was just an approximation because I didn't know who was going to end up stepping into these characters. So once I had Hillary and Michael and, and Robert and Blythe and Thaisa, I wanted them to feel free to just, especially given that they were so well cast. It just felt like you are this character. You just go and run and play and, you know, and, and don't worry about precision with the words. Precision is the last thing I wanted. I wanted them to feel like a messy family like you really are when you're together so um so that i think letting them have that freedom to just step into these characters i, I think that was always what made me feel most confident as an actor and most relaxed and made me feel like i belonged in these characters shoes and so i could just vibrate with whatever i felt was right to vibrate with um and you know, just kind of uh, trying to be there emotionally with them and 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 be there if, if they needed me and otherwise just try not to breathe so I didn't screw it up. <laughs> Does that background as an actress uh, help you as a writer in the sense that, I mean, I think anybody who's ever acted before professionally knows what it's like to get a script and, uh, you know, a character that's not, doesn't have a lot there to work with. Um, so does that influence you in the way that you, try to craft characters that are, you know, fully realized, three-dimensional, and, and have something that actors can play with. Definitely. I, I read a lot of scripts that, you know, I was never a very in-demand actress, so I get a lot of the really great material. And I, and that was helpful as a writer to re, just read stuff and be like, okay, this is not working, and process why, you know, and what I would do if with the character if I... I've been given the chance to play it and what I might do if, you know, if, um, if, if I had an opportunity to rewrite it. So, you know, that definitely helped. And also just to, to know, to write the kind of characters I would have wanted to play, you know, um, and to really make them full round whole people, uh, it, which was challenging in a, you know, in a story that is, is got so many sort of moving parts and pieces that we're looking at a real portrait of a family. Um, it just kind of forced me to really kind of mine the real estate um, uh, aspect as, as deeply as I could and, and then allow them that to step into those textures as, as much as they were comfortable on, on the day. Um, so yeah, it was definitely a big help, I think, being an actor first, yeah. Uh, this film had its premiere at Sundance uh, and uh, has been making the rounds ever since then. Uh, it's been critically lauded and uh, you know, people like myself are now talking to you about it. Uh, so to have uh, made such a personal film and have it be embraced uh, by so many people, what does that mean for you? Um, what a great question. It is incredibly, um, it's incredibly, uh, there's really no words. I'm like deeply moved and honored and profoundly uh, touched really by the response that I, the, the response that it's been getting 
specifically, I think for the personal, I've done a lot of like traveling, you know, to different festivals, wonderful festivals and, and, and able to connect with audiences directly. And people are, are really, there's something that they feel recognized by in the story. And I, that is incredibly moving and like also makes me feel less alone in my own weirdness and bullshit. And, you know, um, I think, you know, I had a, my very first playwriting teacher in college told me that the more personal your story, the more universal its reach. And um, that's, I've heard that voice in my head ever since. And it feels like with this, that is true, that we're really all more alike than we are different. So I, it's been quite an, a surreal and, and beautiful experience this whole process, whole thing. Well, it's a remarkable debut. I look forward to seeing uh, what else you can do as a writer director. Uh, Elizabeth, thank you so much. Congratulations on the film. Thank you, thank you so very much, thank you. You're welcome, have a good one.